COVID numbers once again across India are rising. Uh, there is an uptick. There is a new variant, JN1, doing the rounds. How serious is it? I'm now joined by Dr. Randeep Guleria. Thanks, sir, very much for being with us. Um, it seems that this might have entered, Dr. Guleria, the community, at least in some parts of the country. Is it reasonable to expect that the numbers might shoot up while also believing that numbers shooting up doesn't necessarily mean that would, it would necessarily result in serious illness? Correct. As of now, what we could say is that, yes, this is a new variant. It is a variant of interest. And if you look at data, not only from our country, but also what is happening in the U.S., Canada and uh, Singapore, there is a surge in the number of cases which suggests that this variant is more transmissible. It has some degree of immune escape mechanism and therefore more and more people are getting infected. So we will see a rise in the number of cases, but this will happen as new variants emerge and they develop some degree of immune escape mechanism to become more transmissible. What we need to be very vigilant about is that this should not translate to more hospital admissions or more deaths. So if that does not happen, then I think we will see in cases coming up and down, small waves, if I may put it that way, uh, happening over every every few months, and especially during the winter months. It's the holiday season. People will travel. They will carry the virus with them. There will be crowds, and therefore the infection will spread and cases will rise. Dr. Guleria, is it time to mask up at least on a voluntary basis? So I would say that especially the high-risk group, the elderly, if they're traveling, if you're going to a crowded place, you should mask up. It does help you because although we know that the variant is basically causing a mild disease, we know that people who are at high risk, the elderly or those with comorbidities, can at times get a severe illness, which can lead to worsening of the comorbid condition, and that can lead to hospitalization or ICU admissions. Doctor, you, you, you're part of the team that runs one of India's largest hospitals. Is that your big worry that, um, you know, just statistically, because the numbers in India are so large, if you have X, uh, you know, a lakh plus people, for example, in the NCR region suddenly becoming unwell, statistically, a large number of them would end up being in hospital. And among them, you would get those who are comorbid and are at risk. So therefore, there is a danger of of numbers of people who are seriously affected just because we are a very large country. So I think we need to be vigilant. And like you said, our population is large, but I think we've learned a lot from the last two and a half, three years. And therefore we have uh, uh, processes in place. The government itself has now uh, started a process of being uh, increasing uh, hospital beds, cr creating more infrastructure in case there's a surge in number of cases. So we need to be vigilant, but I don't think there's a need to uh, panic. But I do agree that we need to have our processes in place, whether it be more beds, whether it be drugs, whether it be uh, tracking and testing, because that is something that uh, it's better to be prepared than regret later on. Dr. Guleria, are the vaccines still working? And is there a case for a third booster shot, which many other countries have already administered? If not for this variant, then for any, anything that happens in the future. So I think we need data for that because currently the vaccine that we've had is basically from the Wuhan strain and we've moved on a lot from there to different strains and now the Omicron and sub lineages of Omicron. So we would probably need data to see how effective has, is the older vaccine. And I do think that at some point in time, we will need to have a new vaccine which covers the emerging variants uh, as is being done across the world, that we should have a vaccine which is uh, sort of timely to cover the emerging variants. This is what we do for influenza also. Every year we have a new uh, vaccine, the flu shot, which covers the circulating influenza strain and gives us protection against the new strains which are circulating, whether it be influenza A or influenza B. So similarly, we would probably need to have a vaccine, uh, a booster, especially for the elderly and the high risk group, which provides good protection, protection against the, uh, the currently circulating strains. Right. Uh, and... Uh... You know, just in terms of people, and I, and I was asking this to Dr. Swami Swaminathan yesterday, because a lot of people see these programs, a lot of people see me tweeting, and they say, you know, Vishnu, why are you raising panic? This is just like another cough and cold. Is COVID, you know, in this strain, just like another cough and cold? Is that how we should be looking at COVID? 
So I think there are two parts. One is COVID has emerged now and we've seen after the Omicron strain which came in November of 2021. The cases are usually behaving like a flu-like illness like cough and cold. But we really don't know how the virus will evolve. You know, this is still a relatively new virus and the virus may actually evolve into becoming something more virulent. And that is why as of now it is a mild illness but we need to be very careful how it may evolve over a period of time. We don't know how this virus is going to change. And that is why, like I said, there's no need to panic, but we need to be vigilant and we need to have a very good surveillance in terms of hospital admissions, in terms of ICU admissions, in terms of cases to see how is this new variant behaving and is it further mutating to cause uh, some degree of concern. All right, Dr. Guleria, wonderful to speak to you once again. Uh, I think your message would possibly be we all need to be alert uh, at this stage. I think that is so important right now. Thanks very much, sir, for being with us.